Hi everyone, in this video we are going to take an in-depth look at pathfinding by using navigation layers. In order to begin, I have already prepared a little project in which I have a tile map, I have a little controllable player, and I have a seeker which is basically just an animated sprite with a collision shape 2D. So if I run this, you can see that I am able to move my character and we have this little chicken and we want this chicken to be able to follow us. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, first of all, we have to add a region in our tile map which can be navigated. And how do we do this? Well, we can go to our tile map and here we can select our tile set. Now, if you do not really understand how tile maps and tile sets work, I have a video in which I go in depth over those topics. Now, under the tile set, you see that we have here navigation layers. Now, here we want to add an element. After we added this element, we can go to the tile set menu, select our current tile set, and go under paint. After we select a property from the editor, we can click here on navigation, navigation layer zero. Now we have here four dots, which are basically defining our navigation region. It is not necessary to have this as a full square, but in our case, in which we want to select maybe this patch of grass here, a full square is perfect. So I'm simply going to take this square and put it over here. Now all these grass patches that I have here are possible to navigate by our seeker. And I can prove that by going to debug and checking visible navigation. If I run now, you can see that all these little segments have a navigation layer enabled. Okay, I'm just gonna uncheck that for now. And let's see how we make our little chicken follow this path to get to the player. Well, let's start by making a script. And yeah, let's just create a default script for a character body 2D. And here we want a few things. Well, first of all, we want the basic things, which are, let's say, a movement speed. So let's say var movement speed. This equals to 50.0. And we want a target. We want to be able to follow a certain character. So let's just say that we want to export var target, which is going to simply be a node 2D. And let's say currently that this target is null. So currently we are pointing towards nothing. Now, there is a special node that we can use in order to enable navigation. And that node is called a navigation agent 2D. So under the seeker, I'm going to add a new child node, which is called navigation agent 2D. And maybe let's put it properly. <laughs> and now, we can reference this navigation agent in order to get our path towards the player. So drag and drop while holding control. And as you can see, we have here a new navigation agent variable. Now with this navigation agent to the object, we are going to be able to find the position of the player and follow that player properly. And how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, we have to set up our navigation agent. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's create a function. Let's say func seeker setup. For this behavior to work, we have to be able to get the target after the scene fully loaded. And also we have to give the navigation server some time to synchronize. That is why usually it is perfectly fine to just wait one single physics frame. So we are going to do exactly that. We are going to call await, get three, and here we say dot physics frame. Now that we have waited a frame, we can simply say if there is a target, then I am going to set this target position to the navigation agent's position. So let's just say navigation agent to the dot target position equals to target dot global position. Okay, so we attach to the navigation agent our current target. Now, as I said before, we have to do this after the scene is fully loaded. So instead of instantly calling everything right now, so instead of saying just seeker setup, we are going to call this function in a deferred way. So basically just calling it a bit later. So I'm just going to say call 
deferred and seeker setup. Okay, now that we have added a target to our seeker, we need to be able to follow that target. And how are we going to do this? Well, first of all, we want to not use the process, but rather the physics process. So I'm going to write physics process here. And here we want to do a few things. If the navigation agent 2D reached its destination, so if navigation agent 2D dot is navigation finished, we are simply going to do nothing. So we are going to say return. Now, otherwise we can move forward and start implementing our functionality in order to reach our target. And how are we going to do this? Well, first of all, we need to know our current position. So var current agent position will be equal to global position. And we want to know where we want to get. We want to get in the next point in the generated path by the navigation agent. So we are going to write var next path position equals to navigation agent to d dot get next path position. Finally, we simply want to calculate the velocity, which is going to be the vector that takes us from the initial position to this new position. So velocity equals to current agent position dot direction two, and we want to direct to the next path position. And finally, we want to maybe multiply it by our movement speed. So let's just multiply by movement speed. In the end, we maybe can simply move and slide. And if we save and if we drag and drop our player to be the target of our seeker, we will see that our chicken basically follows the player without touching the edges of this map. But there is a little problem <laughs> and you can see that uh, the chicken stops there. Why does this happen? We can see that by going to our navigation agent, debug, and enabling the debugging. Now, if I save and press F5, you will see that the generated path points exactly towards the player. But if I move up or left or wherever, you see that this path never changes and it stays at this position. So how do we avoid this? Well, we only initialize this target position once, so we would maybe like to do it again. So what we are going to do is simply check again if we have a target, so if target, and if we have that target, we are going to, again, simply just set up the target position. Now, if I save, I can press F5, and as you can see, the chicken now follows the path towards the player and the path changes depending on where I move. Now, something that I noticed is that the chicken never turns towards us. So let me just fix that real quick. I'm just gonna go here and let's just say, uh, let's take a reference to our uh, sprite. Animation sprite 2D, okay. And let's just say animation sprite 2D dot flip age equals false if velocity dot x greater than zero and otherwise equals to true. Now if I press F5, let's see. Our chicken currently it's pointed towards right and now it walks towards the left. Okay, this is perfect. Now obviously you might have guessed that there is much more that we can do with this pathfinding functionality. For example, we could have our player drop little grains of corn which the chicken could collect and instead of going towards the player, the chicken should be able to find the pieces of corn and go after them. In order to do that, we are going to go to our player script. And I have already created a piece of code which instantiates the food. So basically it just creates an instance of a scene that I have already set. It's a scene of food, sets the global position to the player position, gets the food collection node, which is this one and in the end adds the food to that simple node. So if I now go to our food scene, maybe let's see what happens there as well. We have just an area 2D, which has a function called onBodyEntered, and when basically something collides with this area, 
the food is going to get freed. Now, in order to make it collide with the chicken, we have to go under collision and enable uh, their collisions. I have already defined some names for collisions. So on the third layer, I have corn and on the second layer, I have chick. So I'm going to say here that the food is on the corn layer and the chick is on the second layer here. And I'm going to save. And now if I go to the main scene, our seeker is going to stay on the chick layer and is going to interact with the corn layer. Okay, I press save. And now if we press F5, we can go to our little chicken. And if I place something, you see that the food basically disappears. Okay, maybe if I can get it to <laughs> reach the food. Okay, but now how do we make the chicken follow it? Well, we have to go to our seeker script again. And instead of getting a single target, we can acquire a target on the fly. So how do we do this? Well, we can simply create a function. Let's call it func acquire target. And in this function, we are going to reference our food container. So basically this little node in which we put all the food. So I'm just gonna say var food container equals to get tree and dot get nodes in group. And what group do we want? Well, this container is in the group called food. So I'm going to say food here. If you don't have this group already added, you can simply say here like something food three, just an example. See, and we have now two groups instead of just one. Okay. And there is only going to be a single node in this group only the food node, so I'm going to get zero here. Now we can check for available food in the container. So let's just say var available food equals to food container dot get children. And now if we have any food, so basically if this array of children that we got is not empty, so if not available food dot is empty, we are going to set the new target. So let's just say var new target equals to available food of zero. Yeah, let, let's just get the first element. We could get a random element if we wanted, but yeah, I think available food of zero is perfectly fine. And now we can set our target to be equal to the new target. Now, when do we call this acquired target? Well. First of all, if we have a target, we do not need to acquire a target. But if we do not have a target, then maybe we can say else acquire target. Okay. Now, if I were to run it again, you would see that we have a few problems. The first problem is that the chicken doesn't quite reach the food. And why does that happen? Well, this is because our navigation agent to D has some predefined values, which tells the navigation agent when we consider a path point or a target to be reached. And these are the values. 20 pixels is quite a lot considering that a single tile is 16 pixels. The chicken is only about five pixels or so. So let's just say five in this case, oh, sorry, not F5, but five. And let's just say target destination uh, is also five. Now, if we save and if we run again, I'm going to place a piece of corn and the chicken reaches it, but our program crashes. And why does that happen? Well, this happens because we check if the target exists, but we should actually be checking if the instance of the target is valid. So let's just say is instance valid of our target. Now, if we were to run this code again, we would see that our chicken already follows the pieces of corn that we put on the ground. Now, as you can see, <laughs> this could make for a pretty cozy game already. But yeah, having a single chicken is not that fun. So let's have multiple chickens, why not? I'm just gonna make this one a scene. So let's just save the branch as a scene and let's just call it seeker. And we want to instantiate more of this scene. So let's just go to the scene and I will press Ctrl D. And let's just say we have four chicks here and we want all of them to follow the pieces of grain that we put down. 
if we place them like this well you see that the chicken kind of get on top of each other maybe you could say that we are going to simply fix that with some collision and it's true we can go to our uh, chicken and say that they should also collide with other chicken so now if we run let's try again you see that now they are colliding but yeah freaky things happen you, you saw that little chicken vibrating uh, in space and the movement is not very very natural for cases like that we have avoidance avoidance is a property of the navigation agent 2d which basically tells the agent to look around for other agents in order to avoid them so if we click on the agent 2d we can go to avoidance here and we can check avoidance enabled. Now here we have a bunch of property. One is telling basically uh, how much is considered a body of an element. So basically how much it should avoid and uh, at what distance it should uh, look for agents and so on. Let's just let it as it is for now. And let's go to our navigation agent signals. And here you see that we have a signal called velocity computed. Now what this does is to notify when the collision avoidance of the velocity is calculated. Because of course the path is calculated, but afterwards it has to consider the other neighbors and it has to be calculated again. So we have to link this signal to our seeker script. And when this new safe velocity, this new velocity is calculated, we simply want to set our velocity to this new velocity. So I'm gonna say velocity equals to safe velocity now we are in one of two cases one case is when we do not want to do any kind of avoidance if we do not want to do avoidance then we simply go with the same code we had before basically but if we have any avoidance then the navigation agent should have its velocity updated so that this signal gets emitted and also updates with the new calculated velocity, our current velocity. So let's just go over that because it's easier to see in practice. So if I just say if navigation agent 2 dot avoidance enabled, so basically if our navigation uh, checkbox here avoidance is set, then what are we going to do? Well, we want to set the velocity of the navigation agent 2D. So the velocity has a setter. I'm going to say navigation agent to d dot set velocity and set this with uh, the value that we have here. Maybe let's just save it into a variable. Var variable new velocity equals to this, and let's just set it to new velocity. Otherwise, we simply go with what we had before. What we had before was to simply assign this value to our velocity we could say velocity equals this value but we already have this function so let's just call this function and call it with new velocity we could have said here velocity equals new velocity and it would have been the same okay if we save now if we press f5 let's just drop some pieces of corn you see that the cheeks do not get close to each other and if that is not perfectly clear at first glance, then maybe we can go here and modify this radius. Let's go with something more extreme, maybe 30 pixels. If I save it again, you see that the chicken are spread apart uh, quite a lot. And yeah, uh, we already start to have some problems because the distance from them is maybe a bit too large. Now, one more thing that I want to show you, and for that I'm going to disable this avoidance, and maybe to make the scene simpler, I'm going to get rid of all these chickens and just leave a single chicken in our scene. Now, our chicken is already pretty good at avoiding gaps in the tile map, and for this part, I'm going to enable the visible navigation so we can see this better. If I press F5 and if I drop some corn here, you can see that the chicken is already avoiding them. And if I press space again, you can see that here the chicken also goes around and does not go over the gaps. This happens because navigation simply is only where the tile maps are defined. Okay, but what if we wanted to add an obstacle? 
For this, I have as an example the free chicken house here, which I am going to place somewhere on our time map. Let's just say that we want it to be here. Apparently, there is a problem because we cannot place it directly as it is. We need to put it on a new layer so that we do not destroy what's below. So I'm just gonna go below and here under layers, I'm gonna add a new one. Let's just call it coop. And now if I go here and select coop, you see that I can place the little coop on the tile map. Now, if we were to start this, you would see that I could go here and place a piece of grain and the chicken goes through the coop. Okay, now my first idea would be to simply go to this uh, little coop and just add some physics layer to it. So basically add collisions to it. I'm going to the tile set and adding a new element. And I have here the fifth layer. Let's say that the coop is on the fifth layer and we want it to collide with the chicken and we want the same for the chicken. So the chicken also collides with the fifth layer. Okay, now I save this and I go to my tile map. I select my tile set and I want to paint the physics layer. And here I have a square and I just want to paint on the whole coop some collisions. Now, as you'd expect, the chicken is going to stop at the coop, but it's hardly going to avoid it. As you can see, it's, it's pretty hard for the chicken to do some avoidance. Okay, maybe a next idea would be to set the chicken as floating because this way we can set the minimum slide angle to zero degrees, which makes it slide a bit more when it reaches some kind of edge. As you see, it, it slides near the coop, but still, still this doesn't feel very natural. And sometimes, as you can see, it could get blocked. Now, in order to fix this problem, we are simply going to create a script for our tile map. And we want the tile map to remove all the navigation layers from tiles which are being drawn below elements drawn on layer one or on layer coop. So basically all these little grass blocks, we want to have no navigation layers. So how are we going to do that? Well, we are going to attach a new script, click create, and here we can use two virtual functions. One of those is func use tile data runtime update. This basically is called for each tile. And what it does is to return either true or false. And if it returns true, it's going to call the next function, which we are interested in. Now, each tile has its coordinates and we want to see if we have drawn something on top of those coordinates. So basically, if there is something on layer on at the same coordinates. So what are we going to do is to say if chords in get used cells by ID of one. Now, what does this do? Get used cells by ID basically tells us all the cells that are on layer one if the current cell corresponds to any cell in that layer, then we are going to return true. So return true. And otherwise we don't care. So we are going to return false. Okay. Now that we have defined our uh, basically enabler function, we are simply going to define the next function, which is func tile data runtime update. And this one takes layers, coordinates and tile data, but we don't really care about that because all the stuff ha has already been done for us behind the scenes with this little function. And the only thing we have to do is to say tile data dot set navigation polygon. And what do we want? We want the navigation polygon on layer zero to be empty. So to be nothing. So we just say the first parameter zero and the second one null. Now, if I press F5, you will see that our coop no longer has any navigation and our chicken is going to simply avoid it. Maybe if the chicken doesn't avoid it properly, it gets too close to the edges. You should also make sure that, uh, let's go here. You should also make sure that the pet finding has uh, edge centered set by default. So this is going to simply define the paths towards the centers of the cells. And as you can see, it gets further away from the coop. But 
yeah other than that everything uh should work perfectly so this has been pretty much it i hope you liked the video i hope you found it useful and see you in the next one